Hello everyone, Dr. Amy Thompson here to help you learn how to identify the families of dragonflies that reside in the upper Midwest. This video is being made to go along with the dragonfly curriculum guide. If you live somewhere else in the world besides the upper Midwest of the United States, you can use additional resources. There might be different families of dragonflies where you live or where you are. On my webpage, which is amydragonfly.com, you can click on the resources tab and see that there's a dragonfly identification resources button here and that'll bring you to this page and i've been trying to gather up all the dragonfly identification resources that i can find and and post them on a list on this page this list is always growing and changing so please feel free to use this list if you don't live in the upper midwest of the united states but if you do this video is going to help you figure out how to identify the families within the order Odonata. So Odonata is the order name that contains dragonflies and damselflies. And there are two suborders within that order that we'll be talking about today. There's Anisoptera, which means not equal wings, and those include the dragonflies. The Zygopterans are the damselflies. But today we're just gonna focus on the dragonflies. So they're in the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Arthropoda, the class Insecta, the order Odonata, and then the suborder Anisoptera. So we're not going to worry too much today about genus and species. We're just going to try and get them down to family. So this is a page from the Dragonfly Curriculum Guide, and it's sort of like a, a dichotomous key. It's going to help you figure out how to identify each of them. And so on the right side is damselflies, this bubble right here. I'm drawing a circle around. We're not going to worry about those right now. We're just going to focus on dragonflies. And it teaches you how to identify the difference between dragonflies and damselflies in the curriculum guide. So once we've figured out that our dragonfly is a dragonfly, not a damselfly, we want to look to see if the eyes touch. So my slides are not going to file, follow this key from here on out, but they're going to help you follow the key. So this is a picture of, the dra of a dragonfly where the eyes are very much touching. In fact, they look mooshed together, like two different balloons that are pressed together and makes a line on the top of the head, like one giant sort of helmet of eyes. If you see a dragonfly that has eyes like this, it's in the Darner family. And these dragonflies are usually pretty big too. Here's a picture of one flying from the side. And we often call them mosaic dragonflies or blue darners if they have this kind of striping on the side, which most of the darners do. And if you're excited about identifying them down to genus or species, looking at the shape and the pattern of these stripes will help you. But for today, just learning the families, look for eyes that it makes sort of a helmet over the entire head. They're kind of mushed together and then make a line on the middle of the face. That's the Darner family. Okay, going back to the key, Darner families are kind of on the bottom down here. So if they don't have eyes like that, they might have eyes that don't touch at all which is sort of the exception to the rule. When we tell you, when we teach how to tell the difference between dragonflies and damselflies, we often say if the eyes are touching, it's a dragonfly, and if they're not touching, it's a damselfly. Well, every good science rule has an exception, and the clubtail families with the dragonflies are the exception. Exception. They are dragonflies, not damselflies. Their wings are held straight out. They're usually relatively large, or they can be smaller, but if the eyes do not touch, that's unequivocally in this club tail family. And that's actually the first question on the key. If the eyes do not touch, they're a club tail. So darners have a helmet basically made of eyes and the club tails have eyes that don't touch at all. So we can have a dragonfly where the eyes are touching, but they're just touching a little bit. They're not mashed together like a helmet here. So when you see the eyes, if they are touching and they're not mashed together, you want to start looking for some other features. So one feature you can look forward to see is does it have a band right here? It's usually yellow or white. Right behind the thorax at the front end of the abdomen, is there a yellow or white band right there? And if you see a band or a ring, sometimes it's complete, sometimes it's incomplete, that indicates that this is in the emerald family. Now, emeralds also often have really bright green eyes, and I'll give you a tip about looking at their wings too that will help. But just put in your mind right now, emeralds have a white or yellow ring right behind their wings. 
Another family of dragonflies that has eyes that only touch a teeny, teeny, teeny bit are the spike tails. And in fact, they, it looks like they almost make sort of an infinity shape right here, like a sideways number eight. And this is an indication that you're looking at a spike tail. They only touch at one very tiny point on their face, on the top of their face. And to talk more about this, I'm going to go over to some slides made by Kaya Brash. Kaya made these slides for the Minnesota Dragonfly for a presentation she did for the Minnesota Dragonfly Society. And this is the same photo I used to show the um, figure eight shape of the eyes, but also spike tails get their name because the females have an ovipositor where they lay their eggs from that comes straight out the very tip of their abdomen. And they use that to lay the eggs in the water. Spike tails are also pretty big. They're pretty robust creatures and they are nearly always black with yellow stripes. So think of spike tails as having the figure eight eyes and they're pretty big with yellow stripes. But know that they have a couple stripes on their thorax. That's important because one other group of dragonflies family that you want to identify is black with yellow stripes but they only have a single yellow stripe on their thorax. If they have just one stripe, they're the cruiser family. Those are also usually kind of big with black and yellow stripes. So to tell the difference between them and spike tails is you look for just one single stripe. It can look yellow or maybe a little bit whitish. Now, the last group I'm gonna tell you about, the last group that we have in the upper Midwest in the United States is the skimmer family. And the skimmer family is often sort of the catch-all family. If it's not one of these other types that we've talked already when you're going through the key, I'll review that in the very end. Um, it's probably a skimmer. Skimmers can come in all shapes. They can be big, they can be tiny, and they often have colorful wings. Like this one here has black marks and white marks. So if it has colorful wings, that could be a clue it's a skimmer, but still go through the key to figure it out for sure. Speaking of the key, let's review it. So if we know it's a dragonfly and the eyes do not touch, we know it's in the clubtail family. If the eyes touch at only one very tiny point, like that sideways figure eight, and it's big and black with yellow stripes, that's a spike tail. If there's only a single yellow stripe on the thorax, spike tails will have two. If there's a single yellow stripe or white stripe on the thorax, it's a cruiser and if the eyes touch in the middle of the face, making kind of like a helmet head, this first one we talked about, then it's a darner. These last two emerald and skimmer families are the last to sort of key out because they can be the most tricky. And let me give you an extra clue to help key those out. As I mentioned before, the skimmers are, they don't have anything else that we talked about. They often have colorful wings. Their eyes just touch a little bit, but not in a figure eight shape. And then we also talked about the emeralds having this um, yellow or white circle or band behind their wings. That band is hard to see in a group of emeralds called the basket tails. So here's a handy trick. If you look at their hind wing, there is a bunch of cells in the hind wing that make different shapes. In the skimmer, these shapes, these cells all together, we call this the anal loop. Oftentimes in entomology, we use the organization of cells and wings to help us with identifying. So you're getting some deep, nitty gritty um, entomological skills in this lecture. So if you look at the anal loop, the shape of it, it's pretty, imagine this as a boot with a really pointy toe. And I think of it as kind of like a ballerina toe, like a, a ballerina like pointing her toes, if you imagine that. And then in the emerald family, the boot shape down at the bottom, it looks more squared off. To me, it kind of looks like an elephant foot. So if you think of E an emerald and E an elephant foot, you'll see that um, this can help you figure out the difference when you're trying to tease out tricky dragonfly. Is it a skimmer or is it an emerald? Look in the hind wings at this anal loop, the organization of the cells. And here's a um, photo of some dragonfly wings so you can try and see the shape and um, I'm going to show you with my cursor. This is the anal loop right here. And then if you look at the toe of the boot, does it look like an elephant foot or a ballerina foot? This is an elephant foot. Therefore, these are emerald wings. Kind of cool. You can figure that out without even seeing the body of the dragonfly, isn't it? And then this is another 
set of wings and the anal loop is right here. So here is the tippy toe and it's kind of going up and around and this is a pointy tippy toe like a ballerina. So this is in the scammer family. All right, that was a 10 minute video. That was a long video, but now you know all you need to know for identifying dragonflies to family in the upper Midwest. Talk to you soon.